Is the funeral over yet? If so, hurry back here. It's Mommy's birthday party today. Get the preparations started quickly. Well now that your parents are no longer here, you can fully devote yourself to serving my parents. This is exactly why I find Daddy's girls so troublesome. These were the words spoken to me by my husband on the day of my beloved father's funeral, after he passed away in a car accident. My anger overwhelmed my sorrow, and I decided to seek revenge on this man. With a face wet with tears, I headed towards my in-law's house and vigorously placed the birthday cake on the table. A few minutes later, the cake melted and collapsed in a fierce blaze. My name is Julia. I'm 33 years old. I met my husband Kevin at a matchmaking party that a friend invited me to. We have been dating for a year and just got married half a year ago. But I already regret this marriage. There's of course a reason for this. Hey Julia, isn't the meat ready yet? You're a butcher's daughter, why are you so inefficient? Sorry everyone, my wife isn't very efficient he said, grinning and playing the role of the domineering husband in front of his friends and their families from his student days. If you feel that way, why don't you help out a bit? I whispered back to him irritably. There are things we're good and not good at. You're a butcher's daughter, so you must be good at handling meat. I'm letting you look good, you know. Are you stupid? Being good at grilling meat? My boastful husband suddenly decided to host a barbecue. Now, I'm grilling meat non-stop for over 10 people. Why did this happen? My family has something to do with it. My family has been running a butcher shop in the next city since my grandfather's time. Currently, my father is running the shop with my brother and a few part-timers. My mother passed away due to an illness when I was young, but my father filled her absence with his love, so I rarely felt lonely. Thanks to our community-based customer service, our shop is reasonably successful, and we've even been featured on local TV a few times. When my husband's friend found out at a drinking party that I was the daughter of the shop owner, he told my husband that he was envious. At that point, without consulting me, my husband decided, Oh, then let's have a barbecue at our place next time. I'll let you eat as much meat as you want. Of course. I was furious. Why would you decide to do something so big on your own? Eat as much as you want? Our shop isn't all you can eat. And how are you going to barbecue in a rented apartment with no yard? Do you want to burn down the house? I let loose at my self-centered husband. Even he seemed to realize that he'd messed up. Well, I was drunk and I can't back out now. I've got my pride, you know. Could you ask your dad for me? Just this once. Please? Seeing him put his hands together in front of his face and beg, I reluctantly agreed. All right, but just this time, okay? I regretted my decision as I asked my father to prepare enough meat for everyone. That day I was feeling down for the morning. That's because I had assumed we'd be having the barbecue at a facility near our house, but... We're having barbecue at my parents' house, my husband said, and I felt like I was about to collapse. That's because... You made it. It's been years since we've had a barbecue in the yard. I was so excited that I even worked hard cleaning up the yard. She said, completely ignoring my presence and greeting only her son. She was Mary, my mother-in-law. From the start of our marriage, I'd always had a hard time with... No, I hated this woman. I don't know if she was lonely because her only son got married, but she's openly hostile towards me. It's like she's a woman who's had her lover stolen away, and I find it creepy. And there's something that I find downright disgusting. We would have done the yard cleaning if you'd said so. You just recovered from a backache, so be careful. But thank you, mommy. My husband said, sending shivers down my spine. Before we got married, my husband used to call his mother mom, but after we got married, he started calling her mommy. He must have been hiding it. I wish he had kept it hidden forever. The word mommy, coming from a man in his mid-thirties, has a particularly creepy ring to it. Like me, my husband also lost his father to illness. 
at the matchmaking party, he said, I can only be grateful to my mother for raising me alone. I was attracted to that filial side of him. However, after getting married, he often goes out for meals without me, saying, I'm going to have dinner with mommy for the first time in a while on the weekend. He was what you might call a mama's boy. Mary, perhaps, pleased to be cared about by her son, looked at me with a triumphant face. Sighing, I said, I want to cut some vegetables, so may I use your kitchen, Mary? She silently washed me as I cut the vegetables, which was frightening. Then she say things like, What a messy way to cut! Your personality is seeping through! You're clumsy! More importantly, when are you planning to move in with me? Kevin is all for it, you know. I thought about stuffing a raw onion in her noisy mouth, but I held back. To be honest, the topic of living together has come up frequently since we got married. If she was a kind person, I wouldn't have any complaints. But a son who loves his mom and a son who calls her mommy? Nah. There was no way I could imagine living happily together. One of the part-timers quit. It's hard to find a replacement, and it's far from here, so it might be a bit difficult. I keep gently refusing. By the way, none of the part-timers have quit. In fact, they're all experts who've been there for over five years. As I was deflecting my grumbling mother-in-law next to me, my husband's friends started to gather. Amid the clamor, the barbecue began, and I kept grilling meat and vegetables diligently. Come on, Julia. Hurry up and grill the meat, he commanded. Even his friends were more considerate, saying, Hey, Kev. You should take over for a bit. Julia hasn't eaten anything since we started. Actually, I'll take over. The meat is really delicious. Thank you. My dad would be happy. I responded with a smile, but my husband was glaring at me. In the end, I only got to eat a few pieces of meat and spent the rest of the time sweating and grilling nonstop. I asked Kevin to switch with me several times, but he said things that made no sense, like... You're better at it, so you do it. With the matter of Mary and now this, my anger was on the brink of peaking. Several hours later, as we were tidying up, my husband said, Hey, Julia, what was up with you today? Don't flirt with my friends. What? As far as I was concerned, I was simply being polite and friendly to them. However, it seemed he didn't like me being all smiles. With my silent response to his ridiculous comment, Mary, grinning, said, She's a butcher's daughter, after all. She must be a carnivore. Kevin, be careful. You can always come back to your mommy if things get tough. My patience reached its limit with my husband, who didn't even try to defend me. I slammed the trash bag I was holding onto the floor and said, I'm going home. If your mommy is so important to you, you can stay here forever. And with a glowering look, I headed briskly towards the car. I collected some of my belongings at home and headed straight to my parents' house. I received several calls from my husband, but naturally I was not in the mood to talk and ignore them all. My father and brother were surprised to see me suddenly return home, but my father was pleased. It's been a while since I've had your cooking, Julia. He didn't ask for any details. I complained to the part-time workers at our family's shop about my husband and mother-in-law and they agreed with me, saying things like, That's enough to warrant a divorce. It's creepy for a grown man to call his mother mommy. After spending about a week in this manner, even my dad said, Julia, you can come back here for good, you know. Being divorced isn't unusual these days. Just follow the path that makes you happy. I can also go to that house with you if you want me to. He's always been good like this. At this point, I no longer had any feelings of love for Kevin, and I was almost certain I wanted a divorce. Despite me returning to my parents' house, he hadn't visited me, and had only been sending condescending messages like, You should cool down and come back soon. Even if we chose to reconcile, the outcome was obvious. I doubt there's anyone in this world who could get along with Mary. Our shop was thriving as usual and I was able to forget about the unpleasant things while working. I'm going to take a little break. Look after the shop. 
my father, the shop owner, said, and the employees responded with a yes, sir. It was a typical scene. But after about 30 minutes, my father hadn't returned. That's unusual for dad. He usually comes back in about 15 minutes, but he's getting old, so it's good for him to take a slow break sometimes. My brother responded with a disgusted look. You know, dad has been asking me if you've been getting harassed or something ever since you came back. I keep telling him to ask you himself. Don't worry him too much. It was clear that he was concerned about me. Just then, a regular customer, a middle-aged woman, rushed into the shop, panting. There's been an accident at the intersection. Your father is in trouble. Hurry up and go. We had just been talking about the sound of an ambulance siren a few minutes ago. The part-timers insisted that we should leave, saying not to worry about the shop and hurry up. So my brother and I rushed to the scene. There was already a crowd of people there. Let us through, we shouted as we pushed through the crowd, but when we got to the scene, we were speechless at what we saw. It was hopeless. There was a pool of blood under my father's body, and the paramedics were desperately performing CPR, but my father was unresponsive, like a doll. Later, my father was declared dead, shortly after arriving at the hospital. Dad! Dad! I could only cry. But my brother, on the other hand, was running around handling hospital procedures and arranging for the funeral home. We'll have to close the shop for a while. Julia, let's send Dad off with a smile at the end. Also, you should properly contact your husband, even though you're separated. I nodded quietly at my brother's words. It was the first time I had contacted my husband since that day. He answered the phone surprisingly quickly. What? Have you finally decided to apologize? His attitude pissed me off, but I said, My father had an accident and passed away. I'll give you the address of the funeral home, and the time is... Wait a minute. What are you saying all of a sudden? Is it true that your father died? I could tell that my husband was shaken by my sudden news, but I said, Do you think I would joke about something like this? Please tell your mother. Also, I have something I want to discuss with you after the funeral. Now I have to handle some things, so I'll hang up. I sent him the address of the funeral home in a message, and then started rushing around. However, after that, there was no contact from my husband, and he did not appear at the wake. Julio, what happened to your husband? My brother asked, and all I could do was force a smile. I couldn't get through on the phone, and he didn't respond to my messages. I reluctantly contacted Mary, but to my surprise, she had blocked my number. In the end, I couldn't reach Kevin on the morning of the funeral. What's going on with your husband, Julia? He wasn't at the wake either, a relative asked. Well, it seems his mother isn't feeling well and he's taking care of her. I lied on the spot but got scolded. No matter how unwell she is, it's not like she's in the hospital or needs caregiving, right? It's absurd to not attend the funeral when your wife's father has passed away. I could only apologize. They were absolutely right. I don't know anyone who lacks common sense as much as him, myself. This is ridiculous. Unbelievable. Just when the funeral was about to start, I noticed my phone on silent mode, vibrating. It was a call from Kevin. I have to take this call. I'll be right back. I hurriedly went to the calling space and picked up the phone, and my husband said something outrageous. Hello? Is the funeral over yet? If so, hurry back here. It's mommy's birthday party today. Get the preparations started quickly. Well, now that your parents are no longer here, you can fully devote yourself to serving my parents. This is exactly why I find daddy's girls so troublesome. Without any apology to me, my husband chattered away cheerfully, which infuriated me. A birthday party? Are you out of your mind? My father's funeral is about to start. Don't tell me you're planning not to come. To my words, he replied, My friends offered to throw a birthday party for my mommy as a thank you for the barbecue the other day. It would be rude to refuse. Besides, we've only been married for half a year, and I don't really know your father well, so it's not a problem if we don't participate. His words made me dizzy. I'm not coming to the stupid party. Stop making a fool out of me. 
talk to my husband, trying to suppress my rising anger, but he said, Then at least bring the cake. I asked you to make arrangements for her birthday cake from the start. I don't know where the shop is. Get over here, quickly. Indeed, I had been asked to reserve Mary's birthday cake a month ago. Basically, this idiotic husband was telling me who was about to start my husband's funeral to bring the cake now. I won't forgive this. This is outrageous. A few hours later, I was standing in front of my in-law's house. There were loud voices coming from the garden. I'm sorry for the wait. It was noisy, but it went quiet when I appeared. Julia, how long were you planning to keep us waiting? You really are an unpleasant wife. My husband laughed, but none of his friends were laughing. Julia, that outfit. It's no wonder they were shocked. I was standing there in a morning dress. My face was messy from tears. Today was my father's funeral. The burial just finished and I rushed over. Kevin was being annoying about bringing the birthday cake for his mother quickly. I laughed weakly. What? Your father's funeral? Hold on a sec. Kevin didn't tell us anything about that. We only heard that you would be a bit late because of some matters. And Kevin, what the hell are you doing here? My husband, who was being interrogated by his friend, said, Well, that, because everyone kindly held a birthday party for my mommy, my mom. His words were interrupted by, Wait, what's this about a birthday party? Today, we decided to gather to thank your wife for the barbecue the other day. How did it turn into celebrating your mother's birthday? Faced with the unexpected truth, Kevin and Mary, sitting behind him, turned red. What a couple of fools. Well, but... Unable to think of any excuse, his words and voice became fewer and smaller until they couldn't be heard. I thought so at the barbecue too, but isn't your attitude towards your wife too harsh? I've never heard of anyone prioritizing their mother's birthday over attending their wife's father's funeral. Are you crazy? And you too, ma'am. The gazes directed at my husband shifted to my mother-in-law, and the two of them shrank considerably. We're leaving. Julia, we'll come again later to pay our respects to your father. The friends patted on my shoulder, and I smiled weakly. In the silent garden, Kevin said, did you enjoy embarrassing me in front of my friends, you fool? Apologize to me right now. Following his lead, Mary chimed in. That's right. Apologize to Kevin. Make sure you clear up the misunderstanding with our friends. Can't believe I got such a ridiculous woman for a daughter-in-law. I stared silently at the two of them, glaring at me with their faces red. I placed the birthday cake that I was holding on the table without a word. That's right. I've been thinking the same thing, that I married into such an outrageous family. But that ends today. I'm not patient enough to keep playing family with insane people. As I spoke in a calm tone, I stuck candles one by one into the cake. Hey! Their faces turned stiff. Not surprising. I had prepared enough candles for her age. By the way, it was 63. Okay, it's ready. I guess this will do for lighting up the candles. All the candles that were stuffed on top of the cake caught fire from the lighter I held, creating a roaring flame. The surroundings had gotten quite dim. It looked like a small campfire. The cake began to melt from the intense heat and crumbled right in front of Mary. You can blow them out now. It's funny how an old woman like you is still celebrating her birthday. It's not like you're loved enough to be celebrated. I said this and gave a snort. Are you crazy? Kevin hurriedly poured a bucket of water on the cake. The water bounced back on the table, completely soaking her upper body. Sorry, Mommy. I don't know if it was anger towards me or embarrassment, but Mary, her body shivering, said, Get out! With that, I said, I was planning to leave without you telling me to. This is the last time I'll see you. Hey, Kevin, why don't you marry your mom, you sick mama's boy? I thrust the divorce papers I had prepared into my husband's chest, and then I left my in-law's house. A few days later, several of my ex-husband's friends came to visit my parents' house. They lit incense for my father's altar and spoke lightly of Kevin. Despite what had happened, my ex showed no signs of remorse. His friends were flabbergasted 
and apparently no longer in contact with him. He was so hated that he was blocked on all social media platforms, and I couldn't help but laugh at his misfortune. That day, we were shouting so loudly that the neighbors could clearly hear our conversation. As you might expect, he was getting the cold shoulder from them. He seemed to be participating in matchmaking parties without learning his lesson and was banned from multiple venues because he kept trying to attend with his mother, who said, I'll make sure to screen her properly. Kevin, who was abandoned by his friends, finally seemed to realize how crazy his mother was. He came to the shop unannounced. Julia, I was wrong. Won't you give me another chance? Instead of me, who was ignoring him, part-time ladies told him, Sir, if you continue to disrupt our business, we will call the police. My ex must have been also very scared of my older brother, a former judo club captain, who threatened him with, How dare you show up here? Leave in ten seconds or else. He never showed his face again. Since then, I've returned to my family home and have been working hard every day with my brother and all the staff. When things settled down a bit, my brother told me, Our dad, you know, he jumped out to shield a kid who ran onto the road, and that's when he had the accident. He was such a hero. My brother, who had been largely stoic and didn't even shed a tear at the funeral, cried for the first time. I couldn't stop my tears seeing that, and we both sobbed in front of my father's altar. I swore to protect this shop that my grandfather and father left us, because I believe that's the best way I can honor them going forward.